we are on time, so unfortunately some of our colleagues could not come because they, 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 have, they, they catch the, the COVID yesterday. And uh, so this was unfortunately at least five could not come due to the COVID. But uh, <clears throat> anyhow, I think this is time for us to start. Uh, I will ask, uh, can we start or? Yeah, I think that we, we, we will restart now. Sorry for this, just to let our colleagues that are in Zoom that want to hear us. So after the break, we will follow up for the year 2021. 20, um, it was really a year where we have most of us fully confined and very hard to move. But even so, <clears throat> we, we could promote some of our duties as an academy. And I'm very, very grateful to the head of divisions and to the scientific councils that they keep doing the job and trying to see uh, wh where the excellence is and where we could really <clears throat> go further and try to distinguish not only the activity related to the awardees, but also with the fellows, where we are following some uh, very restrict uh, commitments. I have just to remind that we are an European Academy, and, uh, but we aim to, to tackle all science global. In this respect, we have 20% of our members uh, are not, are not, uh, are not uh, original. From, from Europe. And uh, th this means that, of course, when we open, and we have to take into consideration all, all of these balances. And for us, it's a great honor because we really believe you are the best when selected by the heads of the division. And this is what uh, really is very important for our academy and also is very important for globally but in special for Europe, where we try to make this track of great talents that I'm pretty sure we have globally. And uh, in Europe, uh, the best way is networking. And I have just to say that last month, we have had a very fantastic meeting organized by the Environment and Earth Division that involves our academy and the Chinese Academy of Science and Technology was a great event. Um, unfortunately, it was by Zoom. Uh, we have been postponed this event for more than three years, but was something very, very positive, and we expected to networking. Even last week, I was with the president of the uh, US uh, Engineering Academy, and he is also willing that we could try to promote and try to cross-cutting this type of synergies. And this is, in fact, the, what, what the Academy is. The Academy aims not only to stay here, but also to see how we can support the policies taking decisions in the future. And there are no doubts that the examples of the awards are something else that, um, by sure, impacts in our lives and our examples, uh, life examples that we expected the talents that are now emerging could follow, not only in Europe, but globally. So saying so, uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, we will start with the, with the highest recognition that we have in our academy, which is the Leonardo da Vinci Prize 2021. Um, it was uh, given to an outstanding professor, Professor Helmut Schwarz from University of Berlin, for uh, making the, the louder of the distinguished personality. I ask Professor. Yeah. So Helmut Schwarz is certainly one of the leading international chemists and scientists, as well as a highly valued expert and advisor to higher education policy. 
pointed to his first professorship for the theory and practice of mass spectroscopy at the Technische Universität Berlin in 1978. He has been professor of organic chemistry at this university since 1983. Helmut Schwarz was a founding member of the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Sciences and Humanities and is vice president from 1989 to 2003. From 2001 to 2007, he was vice president of the German Research Foundation, DFG, and has been president of the world famous Alexander von Humboldt Foundation from 2008 to 2018, where he succeeded not less than three Nobel Prize laureates. During these years in particular, he has been a fantastic and charismatic ambassador worldwide for research, education, science and humanities. His scientific achievements documented in more than 1,000 publications are truly impressive. He has explored gas phase chemistry by combining experimental studies with theoretical methods. The topics were chosen from all areas of chemistry, ranging from small diatomic to rather large molecules such as fullerenes, going beyond the traditional frontiers between organic in organic chemistry, etc. This very broad approach has triggered numerous and outstanding interactions and cooperations with related fields of natural sciences. His research, his recent research, has focused on organometallic chemistry with particular attention to the contemporary problem of selective bond activation in organic molecules by transitional species. By combining quantum chemical calculation and experimental method, his aims at enhancing our fundamental understanding of elementary steps in transitional chemistry in order to improve the design of tailor-made catalysts, in particular in relation with energy-saving concerns and a better use of natural resources. In the collaboration with the group of Professor Sartan Sheikh at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, he developed the concept of two-state reactivity that provides new insights into the fundamentals of organometallic reactivity. A whole page in small print would be necessary to accommodate the impressive list of membership in the most prestigious academies, Germany, US, India, etc., and outstanding national and international awards and distinctions, including our Blaise Pascal Medal in 2011 are very clear indicators of his worldwide recognition as a scientist and as a man of great culture. Helmut Schwarz is also well known for his passion for education and teaching, research and mentoring, science and arts. He loves music and the opera. To gain an appreciation for his unique personality, I can only warmly recommend, warmly recommend to you an interview of Helmut Schwarz in the framework of the programs Fascination of Science on YouTube, where you will still find other interviews of him. Very easy, go to YouTube, type in Helmut Schwarz, and you will be blessed with a number of fantastic programs. It's a real honor for the Academy to have Helmut Schwarz among our Leonardo da Vinci awardees, and I think we should congratulate him for, for his achievements, although he cannot be present physically, not even, I think, in video, but somehow the message will be conveyed to him. Congratulations, Helmut.
Okay. Now we will continue with the Blaise Pascal medals, but attributed in 2021. And uh, the first one will be the Blaise Pascal medal in mathematics, attributed to Professor Maria Esteban from uh, CNRS France. And uh, the presentation will be given by Professor Jose Carrillo, the head of the mathematics division. Um, it's for me a pleasure to introduce you, Maria Jesus Esteban, uh, born in the Basque Country, and after her studies in Bilbao, she did her PhD at the Université Pierre Marie Curie in Paris, Sorbonne Université, as is known today, under the supervision of Hembresis in 1981 in elliptic equations and variational problems. After her PhD, she started at CNRS, where she has been part since then, first at Paris 6 and then at Ceremad, Centre de Recherche en Mathématiques de la Décision, Université Paris Dauphine. Professor Esteban has always been working in the area of variational problems and partial differential equations related to mathematical physics. She contributed to deep results in relativistic quantum mechanics and related problems to the Dirac operator together with Professor Eric Serret. She also developed the theory of fluid-solid interaction with Professor Benoit Desjardins. More recently, her works in collaboration with Professor Jean Dolbeau and Professor Michael Loss are a hallmark of mathematical analysis on the differential inequalities with optimal constants and symmetry-breaking questions in particular related to the classical cafarelli con nirenberg problem. But not only Professor Esteban's scientific achievements are impressive, but also her commitment to mathematics as a whole. Professor Esteban has served in the last 20 years as president of the SMAI, Société de Mathématiques de Mathématique Appliquées Industrielles, chair of the Applied Mathematics Committee of the European Math Society, one of the driving forces of the project Forward Look, Mathematics and Industry, funded by the European Science Foundation, to finally serve as president of the ICIAM, the International Council for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, the most distinguished applied mathematical group of learned societies worldwide. She has been part of the committees awarding the Abel Prize, the Mathematical, Nobel, uh, the Mathematical Nobel Prize, as you know, EMS Prizes, and the Panel for Advanced Grants in Mathematics of the European Research Council. Her advocacy for the use and transfer of knowledge from mathematics towards industry and the increase of women research careers in mathematics has also always been uh, one of her constant goals uh, through her serving duties. She was honored as the Chevalier de l'Ordre National du Mérite in 2012 by the French President, Cyan Fellow, Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics Fellow in 2016, the Jacques Louis Lyon Prize of the French Academy of Sciences in 2019, Cyan Prize for Distinguished Service for the Profession in 2019, among many others. And moreover, she has been plenary speaker at the International Congress of Mathematical Physics and sectional speaker in the ICM in 2018. Congratulations, Maria Jesus. Many thanks for this medal to the Academy for um, awarding it to me, to the Mathematics Division for proposing me for it, and to Professor Carrillo, its coordinator, for uh, his nice presentation. This medal is, of course, a great honor for me, but also gives me pleasure because I believe that I wasn't proposed to it only because of my uh, research accomplishments, of which uh, I am proud, of course, but also because of my significant involvement in the promotion of mathematics among major sectors of our society, economic and political circles, and the general public. Indeed, for years, through my involvement in learned societies and some international institutions, I've been promoting mathematics as an important science, 
not only because of its beauty and strength, not only because it's the language of other sciences, but also for its growing importance for the technological developments of our advanced societies. The presence of mathematics is quite invisible, but we are there in many places. As some recent studies carried out in several European countries have shown, the impact of mathematics in our economies is huge. Since in the four cases in which it has been done, this impact study, in the UK, the Netherlands, France, and Spain, it has been proved that between 13 and 18 percent of those countries' GDP, total GDP, has been impacted by the use, the important use of mathematics. So you can imagine the total GDP, 18 percent, is a huge economic impact. And not only the GDP, but also high percentage of overall jobs. For example, in France, it has been established that around 13 percent of overall jobs in France necessitate a good amount of mathematics and a good knowledge of it. More and more, in many sciences, in industry, in the society in general, the behavior of complex systems has to be understood. An abundance of data analyzed, estimates, forecast, and decision-making done. And in all those activities, even if it's not very visible, mathematics is very useful. Its usefulness is important and it is growing. So doing research in mathematics is important, proving nice theorem, nice conjecture, solving important problems is very important, of course. Training young students in mathematics is also important for science and for the society in general, but also collaborating with other sciences and the technological and industrial sectors are, is also very important. And I think that it should be valued as a significant part of what science in general and mathematics in particular is doing for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Esteban, for the, uh, this talk showing the importance of mathematics in, in many fields. Um, so now the, the next Blaise Pascal medal uh, has been attributed in, the, in physics uh, to Professor uh, Carl Leo from University of Dresden. Unfortunately, uh, Professor Leo uh, cannot be here with us, but there is a, a, a video. And uh, the, it will be Professor Le, Lecoq, yes, who will present the, the candidate. So thank you, Alain, and uh, thank you, Carl. I hope you are uh, with us. Uh, so Professor uh, Carl Leo is uh, an internationally recognized researcher, researcher in uh, condensed matter physics at the Technical University of Dresden in Germany. His uh, pioneering work on coherent electronics dynamic in solids such as uh, quantum bits and uh, block oscillation in semiconductor superlattices, has led to significant advances in the domain of organic light emitting diodes, so the, what is called OLED for people who are a little bit in the field, organic solar cells and uh, transistors. His uh, paper, to 20, uh, 2009 uh, Nature paper, on a highly efficient white OLEDs has been seated more than 3,000 times. I wish all my paper would be seated this number of times, but okay, fine. Um, Professor Carl Leo has made significant contribution to worldwide semiconductor physics, and his achievements have been recognized with many awards, including the most prestigious research awards in Germany, the Leibniz Prize, and the future prize of the German president. Professor Leo, if you can hear me, I'm proud to count you among us, and I'm delighted to present you the 2021 Blaise Pascal Medal on Physics on behalf of the European Academy of Sciences. And the virtual floor is yours now. Dear President Professor Martins, dear Rodrigo, dear Professor Lecoq, dear Paul, 
it is a great pleasure to receive this medal today and i'm very sorry that i cannot personally participate in the meeting in brussels and i'm bound by other obligations it is a very great honor to be named as the carrier of this medal with the name of Les Pascal, which means the European approach to science, the universal approach, which is even more important in these difficult times when we see that some old conflicts have been heated up again. It is most important to stress that science is a topic which will bring humankind together. Science will pave a way for a better future and it should not be misused for political issues. For me personally, it's also a great honor, but I should stress that this is also an honor for my group because the work we've done over the years together was always in a group and science is by itself a collaborative issue today. And uh, that is one of the points which make it such a nice thing to do. Once more, thank you to everybody. I greet you to Brussels. I hope you have a nice day today and I hope to see you soon again in person. Thank you. Bye bye. The next Blaise Pascal Metal will be the one um, proposed in chemistry with the I um, in 2021 um, to Professor Clément Sanchez from Collège de France in, in Paris. And um, this, uh, the presentation of this, uh, of Clément Sanchez was very well known in the scientific community of chemists in, and, and forward in, in France, will be presented by Pierre Bronstein. First of all, Clem apologizes for not being present with us today. He had scheduled to come, but for family reasons, he had to stay in Paris. So he apologized for that. Well, Clem Sanchez graduated from the Engineer School of Chemistry in Paris, obtained his state doctorate from the University Pierre and Marie Curie in Paris, and entered the CNRS in 1978. He rose through the ranks to become research director exceptional class and was appointed in 2011 professor at the highly prestigious Collège de France in Paris, holding the chair entitled Chemistry of Hybrid Materials. Indeed, his diverse and multidisciplinary research has centered around the design construction of a large variety of hybrid organic and organic nanostructured materials and the development of soil gel science and technology, not only based on silica chemistry, but also on transition metal oxides, rare earth oxides, aluminum, and tin oxides, using the now popular concept of chimie douce. Clément Sanchez is clearly a world leader in this interdisciplinary field of research, where the mild and green conditions used allow a bio-inspired approach at the interface between inorganic chemistry, organic and organometallic chemistry, polymer science, biology, soil gel science, and engineering. His achievements have allowed major advances in the design, synthesis, and study of optical, electronic, electrochemical, catalytic, cosmetic, protection, separation, and mechanical properties of new hybrid materials. The mentoring activities and talent of Clément Sanchez have resulted in the well-recognized school of thought in material chemistry, unifying many disparate scientific communities. He places much importance in scientific education, and he has been a source of inspiration to many young and senior researchers, also reaching out to the general public. His achievements are documented in close to 600 highly cited papers, 75 patents, and he has given more than 200 invited lectures, keynotes, plenaries, 
at international conferences. His impressive achievements have resulted in a number of highly prestigious national and international awards, no time to list them all. I will just mention that he became member of the European Academy of Sciences in 2010 and of the French Academy of Sciences in 2011. Dear Clément, the chemistry division of this academy is delighted to present you with the Blaise Pascal Medal 2021 with our warmest congratulations. Trust you. Okay, now moving to the Blaise Pascal Medal in Engineering, uh, which has been attributed to Professor Isaac Elishakov uh, from Florida Atlantic University. He is unfortunately absent today, and uh, the presentation will be delivered by Professor. Alberto Carpinteri, the head of the engineering division. Alberto, please. Professor Isaac Elishakov is an eminent figure uh, at the worldwide uh, in, uh, in uh, um, engineering mechanics it's a, as a general field. He's, uh, of course, is a very well-known specialist specialist in uh, uh, vibrations, instability, and uh, um, reliability of structures. He's also a very well-known scholar for what uh, regards uh, the, the historical development of uh, this uh, discipline. Uh, at the moment, he is a uh, um, research professor, distinguished research professor at uh, the uh, Atlantic University in Florida, and uh, he is uh, the fellow of numerous uh, academies. Uh, then we can say that he was born in the Republic of Georgia, the Caucasian Republic of Georgia, and uh, uh, got a PhD or doctoral degree in Moscow. Uh, under the guidance of the uh, very famous professor Bolotin, who is considered uh, one of the most important mechanicians uh, of the 20th century. Uh, professor Elishakov taught in different universities. He began from his country, uh, Georgia, and then he was in Israel, and then was visiting professor many universities, uh, uh, in the world, uh, Italy, uh, Netherlands, uh, Netherlands, uh, then also China, Japan, United States, and the United Kingdom. Uh, numerous are his, uh, uh, his contributions, uh, uh, as I already said. Um, they, many of them are seminal, considered seminal, and, uh, uh, and pioneering. pioneering. Uh, he published this uh, contribution through uh, numerous, uh, um, numerous papers, outstanding papers, but also in, in particular by his uh, more than 25 books, uh, published, uh, all of them published by very well-known uh, international publisher. publisher. Um, then we can say that he was uh, editor of numerous uh, and important uh, journals in his field and was uh, organizer of important conference, primary conferences, and also lecturer in, uh, on uh, particular and significant, very significant occasions. Um, last but not, not least, I know that he is a very uh, interested to this point, uh, Pascal himself and Fermat uh, founded the, the theory of probability uh, through their uh, famous correspondences. And uh, on the other hand, Professor Elika, Elishakov the, the, was in some way a continuator of them because he founded uh, 
together with other authors, of course, but uh, he was also maybe one of the most important and the very famous, founded the uh, probabilistic analysis in, in, engineering, in engineering, decades ago. And um, also stochastic mechanics is very well known in this particular field. And uh, uh, also for the so-called so -called, um, uh, so uh, convex, analysis, convex analysis of uncertainty, which is a specific name of a theory, but very well known theory. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Alberto, for this presentation of uh, Professor Elishakov. And uh, now um, we will present the, the Blaise Pascal Medal in uh, Material Science, uh, which has been delivered to Professor Andrea Ferrari from University uh, of Cambridge. And uh, the presentation of the laureate uh, will be given by Professor Stephen de Fitter. Yes, please. Professor Andrea Ferrari uh, earned a PhD in electrical engineering from Cambridge University after a laurea in nuclear engineering from Politecnico di Milano in Italy. He is professor of nanotechnology and professional fellow of Pembroke College at Cambridge. He is a fellow of the American Physical Society, fellow of the Materials Research Society, fellow of the Institute of Physics, and fellow of the Optical Society. Professor Ferrari is, without doubt, an internationally renowned and visionary scientist with an outstanding track record and direct involvement in multidisciplinary activities. Over his career, he has gained all the most competitive and prestigious research fellowships in UK and EU, such as the Marie Curie Fellowship, the Royal Society University Research Fellowship, and several ERC grants, including the first and largest ERC Synergy Grant. In addition, he has been recipient of numerous awards, such as the Royal Society Brian Mercer Award for Innovation, the Royal Society Wolfson Research Merit Award, the Marie Curie Excellence Award and Philip Leverhulme Prize in the EU-40 Materials Prize. Professor Ferrari has given a massive surface, a service to the community by developing the Graphene flagship from the very beginning. He has experience in leading a world-leading research institution such as the Cambridge Graphene Center, which he founded. As director of the Cambridge Graphene Center, his role is also to attract top scientists, recruit and support the professional development of staff members, overseeing advanced educational programs for doctoral candidates and postdocs. The EPSRC Center for Doctoral Training in Graphene Technology, also founded and directed by Andrea Ferrari, is a clear example of this. He has also experience in leading one of the largest research excellence awards in history, the Graphene Flagship. He was a chair of the executive board, work package leader, and now serves as chair of the management panel and science and technology officer. Professor Ferrari devised what is now the standard procedure to identify and assess the structure and quality of graphene layers. He identified and explained the Raman spectrum of graphene. In particular, 
he demonstrated its close correlation not only to the number of layers, but also to their electronic properties, the amount of doping and disorder, the amount and direction of strain, the chemical composition and layer size and orientation. This work was a paradigm shift for the community and provided every group worldwide a simple way to assess and quality check their samples. It increased the knowledge of structure, composition, in situ behavior under outside stimulus, electronic, mechanical, and chemical behavior of graphene. Nowadays, everybody, be it in universities, research centers, or companies, does rely on Raman spectroscopy as a day-to-day -to -day tool for their graphene research. The whole field would have progressed at much slower rates in the absence of Professor Ferrari's work. It would have confined graphene to an oddity for physicists instead of making it such a popular material. Professor Ferrari was the first in many aspects. For instance, he was the first to produce the functional ink based on graphene. This initi initiated a new research field of printed graphene optoelectronics. More recently, his group interfaced graphene with silicon on chip to make high responsivity Schottky barrier photo detectors. Professor Ferrari has over 125,000 cit citations to his papers. He has been recognized as a highly cited researcher in both material science and physics every year since 2014. He has given hundreds of invited keynote and plenary talks at every major conference in his various fields of research and invited seminars and lectures in universities, research centers, and industrial laboratories around the world. Professor Ferrari is an outstanding ambassador of European science all over the world. The Blaise Pascal Medal is awarded to Professor Andrea Ferrari to recognize an outstanding and demonstrated personal contribution to science and technology and the promotion of excellence in research and education. Professor Ferrari. I will take this opportunity just to say this is my second time that I'm uh, awarded Andrea. I award him with the under 40, it's not minus, under 40 prize of the European, because he was a talent at this moment that was an emerging talent, and now he is really a great talent, and for me it's a great pleasure, my the second time to stay here close to you, Andrea. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot for the present, very long presentation for, and for this award that I am I'm very honored to receive. I'm actually, I actually made a point of being here today because we're in Brussels, we're in Europe, and I'm not. And of course, uh, one of the biggest challenges we have in the UK is make sure that this um, absurd decision that was taken uh, about leaving uh, the European Union does not uh, badly reflect on science. I'm fighting every day, but I have to say I'm fighting also with the European colleagues that have this impression that if you're in the EU, you cannot be in European grants. That's not the case. <laughs> and I want to stress that until 31st of December of this year, all the grants applied by the UK, UK will be considered as if it was France, any other or any other European country. So please be careful, be nice, be considerate when you are in the committees evaluating these proposals. The UK scientists, they are not, none of them is against the European Union. They all massively voted in favor and it was a disaster when this happened. But as you can see, what UK has become also for the rest, this is a, uh, one of many bad decisions that were taken and hopefully they will be reversed. That is just the message about the EU. Uh, in terms of science, I like to say a couple of things. Uh, I think material science and new materials are also are important for all sorts of reasons. Something that is exciting me recently is the energy efficiency, because often when we think about usage of energy, we think, we think about some devices, we think about you know, the gas from Russia, whatever, but material science plays a key role in, in the amount of energy that is used. And I only make one example, the example of communication, of Zoom calls or Netflix movies or whatever. 
every bit that we exchange at the moment uses almost 20 picojoule. That seems a very tiny number, but when you consider the amount of bits bit exchange, and now exponentially it is increasing, it means that a Zoom call can produce 300 grams of CO2. It means that nowadays, data communication is already responsible for more emissions than airplanes. We are all excited about airplanes, let's not fly and so on. Is data com the problem? By 2040, over 20% 20 of the global emission will be due to data com. So new materials, like graphene and other layered materials, can allow to cut the emission while transmitting data by orders of magnitude, going below, going from 20 picojoule to way, way below one picojoule per bit. And this is really one of the frontiers where many, many people are working now, including myself, to do energy efficient ICT to really tackle what is an ever-growing issue that most people uh, do not realize. The final point I want to make is that in Europe, plus the UK, we clearly now have a need. The need to learn again how to make things because it's clear for many, uh, you know, for, for COVID and other political circumstances, we need to reach the ability to make, for example, chips and devices here and not having to buy them. We lost this know-how. We, knew, we need new pilot line and competence centers, and I'm very glad that the European Chipsat is going in this, in this direction. And I think there's a huge opportunity here uh, to fill the gap that we now have between excellent research in universities and research centers and companies. We have a gap in the middle, and I'm pleased that many European countries are taking action in this respect. The recovery fund that was uh, awarded uh, to many countries for, for post-COVID is helping in this area. And large initiatives, the Graphene flagship is still continuing. We are not dead yet. We still have until 2027 at least. But also the Quantum flagship, the new one with my, very significant funding, both at the European and the national levels, are based also on new materials. Because people think about quantum, they don't necessarily think about materials, but think about the laser. You will not have the laser without the ruby. You will not have the transistor without the silicon. You will not have quantum science and technology without a new material platforms. And that's the challenge for the future. Material for energy, materials for quantum. And staying all happy together in Europe as much as we can. Thank you very much.